One of the more common questions as it relates to squatting is should the knees pass over the toes? Now before I begin, I will say this, that any type of squatting is going to increase the shearing force placed on the knee. So if you got knee injuries or knee pain or any of that, you might want to reconsider squatting as a whole irrespective of how you squat. But assuming that your knees are okay, should they pass over the toes? I'll take you through a biomechanical analysis of the squat so you can make a better decision for yourself on whether or not you want your knees passing over your toes. Now, uh, as it relates to biomechanics and the universal law of levers, you got two points of emphasis. You got the lever and the direction of resistance. Now, your muscles produce force to move your bones, your muscles attached to your bones. Your bones in this case will be the lever, so let's not get lost on the terminology here. I've color coordinated the board so that you better understand the diagrams when we get there as well. Now, the closer that these two points of emphasis get to parallel of one another, the more neutral the position is. The more closer they get to perpendicular of one another, the more active the lever is going to be. So the first position here, we got the knees above the toes. We got three levers, we got the shin, the thigh and the torso. There's two torso levers, there's a blue one and a green one. That just represents where the torso would be if you're doing a front squat or a back squat. So the green would represent where your torso would be when doing a front squat and the blue when doing a back squat. If we look at the shin though, the quads are responsible for extending the knee and moving the shin. The shin lever here is parallel to the direction of resistance. It's in a neutral position, meaning 0% of the stress is being dumped onto the quads. Does this mean the quads are doing no work? No, they still have to work to provide stability, but the amount of stress being dumped on them when doing a squat this way is virtually none. If we move over to where the knees are in front of the toes, what we'll see is that that lever, the shin bone, is no longer parallel to the direction of resistance, but rather more perpendicular. It's not even halfway perpendicular, but it's more perpendicular and it's not parallel. Therefore, the lever is now active, so the stress being dumped on the quads is now greater. If we look at the thigh bone in both of these, when the knee passes over the toe, it increases the demand on the quad, but it allows or facilitates greater depth to be achieved, meaning that the hamstrings and the glutes, which are responsible for extending the hip and bringing the thigh bone closer to parallel in relation to the direction of resistance, are now under less stress the lower that you get, which is facilitated by having the knees pass over the toe. At the end here, we got a sissy squat. If we take a look at a sissy squat, the lever that the quad is responsible for, the shin, is almost completely perpendicular to the direction of resistance. Therefore, it is in a near maximal activity position. So the amount of stress being dumped on the quads is greatest. Now, is the sissy squat a good replacement for a squat? No, because if we look at the position of the other lever worth noting here, which is the thigh bone, it is more closer to parallel of the direction of resistance. Therefore, the muscles responsible for bringing that bone into a parallel position in relation to the direction of resistance are under a lot less stress. So you will increase the demand of the quads at the expense of the glutes and hamstrings, which is why it's not a good substitute, but something you might want to include in your muscle building strategy if your goal is to build your quads. What you'll notice here is there's a continuum. As the knee is above the toe, less quad activity. As it passes in front of the toe, more quad activity. So whether or not your knees pass over your toes or whether they should or not is completely based on your goal. Are you squatting to work your quads? Or are you squatting for another reason, to lift the most amount of weight and be a power lifter or something like that? If your goal is to work your quads and your knees are healthy, then the more that they pass over the toe, the more you're going to increase the demand on the quads. Anytime someone says you want your knees to stay behind your toes when squatting, what they're essentially saying to you is take your quads out of the movement. But you gotta think, why am I doing the movement in the first place? Am I squatting to build my quads or to build my ass? If I keep my knees behind my toes, I might have a very nice ass, but my quads are gonna fucking suck. Unless I do other things in my strategy that will target them more directly. But if you're squatting to build the quads, you want your knees to pass over your toes. If you like this information, feel free to share. Click the fucking button at the bottom, subscribe to the channel, and I'm gonna keep fucking bringing it.